When you draw stuff onto the screen in Game Maker during the draw event, you're not actually putting things directly onto the screen as you might first expect. What you're instead doing is drawing onto a intermediate surface known as the application surface, and then at the end of the draw event, that is put on the screen, that is put into the frame buffer, as it's known. This isn't something you really normally have to worry about, but it can let you do some interesting things if you want to manually take control over it, which, as you can with many things in Game Maker, you are allowed to do. Let's talk about that. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about the application surface. So to start out with, the application surface itself, if I were to go and... Uh, let's see, I'm just looking for a code window of any sort, preferably a draw event. Actually, a create event will do. If you type the word application surface, uh, you will see that one, the word is highlighted as, as a built-in variable would be, and two, there are a couple functions that also uh, you have access to that you can use to control it. So you have the application surface itself. This is um, like any other surface in Game Maker, you, which you might create using the surface create function. It is essentially a, a grid of pixels that you can draw onto. Uh, the only difference being that you can't destroy it and it will not be automatically um, removed if you do things such as minimize the game window. And you don't really have to say surface set target when you want to draw onto the application surface the way that you would with any other surface that you create. The application surface is simply what you draw onto when no other surface has been set. I did another video a while ago on surfaces and some of the things you can do with them. You may or may not be interested in watching that video, but do be aware that the application surface in particular will be automatically managed by Game Maker, and you don't have to deal with things such as um, freeing it or creating it or setting the target to it or anything like that. Anyway, there are a couple different functions that you can use. Uh, there is application surface draw enable. This is the one that you will normally be using. This will turn the application surface on or off. By default, it's on, obviously. Letting the ap application surface draw by default will allow you to have the game on the screen, as you often, uh, as you often do. And setting it to false uh, without doing anything else will make sure that the game actually does not end up on the screen. So we have the stuff that's drawn in the draw GUI event. Uh, if I were to talk to one of the, the NPCs, you would see the text on the bottom of the screen. You can see the hearts in the corner. But we don't actually have the game world. As I said at the beginning, anything that is drawn during the draw event will go to the application surface, and then anything that you draw on the draw GUI event uh, will, will be placed on top of that. That will be placed directly on the screen in the frame buffer. Now, because the application surface is just a surface like anything else, uh, you can draw it manually. So if you want to, in the draw GUI event, for example, if you want to draw the application surface um, yourself, you can say draw surface. Yeah, the ID is the application surface. The X can be the X position, and the and the, the X can be the X position. The X position can be zero, and the Y position can be zero. And this will make the game appear again. Everything is here once once more. Uh, the application surface is simply being drawn manually by yourself. You can of course move this around. Uh, you could you could draw this at the mass position. This is just, this is not something you would really ever want to do, but this is um probably the more one of the more dramatic ways I can show this working. The application surface is now being drawn relative to the mouse. I'm going to I'm going to set that back to zero and zero. You can of course do other things with this. You can draw the uh, you can use the draw surface extended function and give it a scale or a rotation or a color. I'm going to blend it with red because that should be pretty dramatic. And then we can run the game and we will see that the um, we will see that the that the game world is being drawn red. You can barely see the water here because um, it doesn't have a lot of red in it to begin with. Hey. This is pretty red down here, this path. Okay, that's pretty dramatic. You can use this, as you can imagine, for things such as screen space effects. Uh, if you wanted to tint the screen, if you wanted to tint the entire screen without um, without having to draw every single sprite and every single tile with a blending color, you could, uh, you could draw the application surface with the color instead. If we set that back to white, we will see that everything has returned to normal. When it comes to manually drawing the application surface yourself, and I really should probably actually uh, put this function just just for organization purposes. I really should put this in like the player create event instead of the um, instead of just the the general game object create event, so that it, that code doesn't run like every single time an object is created, which may or may not be actually what you want. If you spawn something in, it'll um it'll run that code, which, which could cause problems. 
Anyway, most of the time you can get away with drawing the application surface in the drawer GUI event. Um, some may consider it more correct to use instead of the drawer GUI event. You can see there are a lot of a lot of draw events uh, to instead do it in something like draw end or in draw end might actually uh, this might actually still be part of the application surface or in the pre draw or post draw events uh, rather I meant to uh, to go for. Okay, I see we are not allowed to draw the application surface in the draw end event. It should be the post draw event instead. Uh, change event, draw, post draw. Now we have the application surface being drawn again. Okay, some may consider that more correct to use the post draw event rather than the draw GUI event. There are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the draw GUI event, if you have multiple objects with code in that event, then you would have to draw the application surface in the first one, in the one with the, uh, the highest depth. Otherwise, it'll be drawn on top of some of the other stuff, as well as some other technical details about how the different draw events work. So there are some uses for this, especially when it comes to shaders. I'm just going to create a, uh, a shader real quick that does something simple. Um, let's see something that I haven't done before. I'm going to do a color inversion shader. This is going to turn things like, this is going to essentially invert all of the colors. So uh, blue becomes yellow. Uh, green becomes magenta, uh, white becomes black, that sort of thing. And I'm just going to achieve this by saying back for 1.0 minus the color that you obtained from the uh, from the texture lookup. That's pretty simple. That's one one line of code. You invert the color by uh, subtracting it from one to essentially turn all the color values upside down. Black becomes white, like I said. And then when I uh, when I draw the duckling, shader set, shader invert, and when we're done shader reset. So this is going to make the ducklings colors be backwards. Uh, this is also working for the alpha, which isn't quite what I want. Okay. Well, we can fix that with a separate line of code. All right, that's a cool stencil effect though. Let me, uh... all right, I want, I want the alpha to, to actually not be affected by that. Save the base color to its own vector four and then the output color will be um, vector three minus base color, red, green, blue, and base color dot alpha without any modifications. Okay, so it was two lines of code instead of one. Forgot about alpha. Anyway, now the duckling spur is green and green and dark blue instead of um, instead of yellows. Okay, if you wanted to apply this to every object on the screen, uh, you could obviously do this in every single object's draw event. Uh, but if you wanted to apply it to the screen as a whole, let's go and remove that. And when we draw the application surface in the post draw event, uh, we can instead say shader set, shader invert, shader reset. And uh, lo and behold, the entire screen is going to be, going to be inverted. That looks, uh, wow. Magenta hurts. Especially when there's this like there's this blue on top of it. Okay, very nice. And the uh, the path tile has turned into water, and the water has turned into like a field of something or another. That's interesting. Anyway, we can see the effect is being applied to the whole screen, which is kind of the point now. So this is a useful thing to be aware of. This may or may not be something you actually ever want to do. Um, as a fun fact, in case you're wondering what happens if you uh, if you invert both the the player sprite and the, uh, the application surface, that's just going to make the player sprite the same color that it was originally. Um, where were we? Shader reset. Because if you invert something twice, you, you, get the, you get the thing you started with. That's mildly interesting if you're just, uh, if that's something you've never thought about before. Anyway, what else can you do with the application surface? You can turn it off entirely if you really want to. Uh, you may have seen the, um, I, I Forget if I actually vocally called attention to this at the beginning of the video. Application surface uh, enable. This will turn the application surface on or off entirely. You usually don't have to do this. Uh, the manual states that this, this feature is mainly here for compatibility with real old devices. Uh, on some older devices and specific chipsets, this may using the regular application surface may result in poorer performance. This is not something that you really have to do with any any modern computer hardware. Really, it's just kind of there in case of emergency with um, 
if you are trying to build a game for some uh, some unusual unusually underpowered device, it may slightly boost performance when it comes to something like a uh, with a, like, like a Raspberry Pi. Although I have not tested that, so I couldn't tell you for sure. Now, something that may be worth mentioning is that you can um, you can resize the application surface. You don't really have to create it or destroy it or anything like that or check that it exists because by default it will exist. But you can surface resize. the application surface and you can give it a new width and a new height. I'm just going to give that something like, I think we'll notice if I, uh, if I, if I cut it down to hundred, hundred. And you can see that the, uh, you can see that the game is now, now being drawn onto a very, very small surface indeed. Again, this isn't something you would really have to do often. I noticed this also, uh, this also completely screwed up the, the GUI layer. Anyway, don't do that. You don't really have to do that sort of thing often. But if you um, if you let the player resize the window, or if you uh, if you resize the window with something like window set size, what's the uh, what's the screen size? I want to say it's twelve eighty by seven twenty. Let me just check real quick. Okay, it's six forty by uh, three sixty, and it's uh, actually scaled up in the uh, in the viewport, if I recall. Yeah, six forty by three sixty is the room size. And the uh, the width and height of the window are 1280 by 720. So anyway, if you were to window set size to something else, let's go 1600 by 900, um, you may have to resize the application surface yourself. As you can see, well, I suppose this is also at least partially uh, the fault of the view being being half size. But you may have to resize the application surface yourself. If I were to surface resize. Will this uh, will this will this make the game look normal, or will I have to do this half size because the um, the view inside the game is half size? It looks like the, I, it looks like I just set the application surface to the size of the um, of the window. So you may also need to do this if the window is resized through other means other than you manually doing it through code with the window set size function. Uh, if you go into uh, game settings graphics allow window resize, then suddenly the user will be allowed to resize the window with the mouse cursor. Um, using a no. Using using this little click and drag thing on the on the program window, and if that happens, you may also need to uh, resize the application surface. As you saw when I did that, things were kind of getting weird. So if I were to go into the step event, uh, Game Maker has, as it turns out, a a window resize function. But as far as I know, that only works in the Universal Windows um, export, and it's not really a general use thing. I don't know why that is, but in any case, uh, you might want to say if surface get width this is essentially a long-ish check to see if the size of the window has changed, to see if the size of the window does not match the size of the application surface, then you might want to say uh, surface resize. And uh, again, you can use the window get width and window get height functions, and this will uh, this will have the application surface resize to the size of the window if needed. Okay, you can see it is working. And uh, every time I do that, a resize and swap chain message pops out in the uh, in the console. Whatever. The other thing you can do for this instead of uh, instead of resizing the application surface is uh, when you draw the surface instead of using the draw sprite extended function. Uh, or you could use the draw sprite extended function, but you could also use the um, draw surface stretched function. And this will, instead of resizing the application surface, this will um, this will simply stretch it out uh, to match the size of the window. And this works as well. Uh, resizing the application surface may be somewhat more correct because it will it will not cause things like pixels to appear to be stretched out uh, if the if the uh, if the application surface is drawn stretched, but you have the option at least. Okay, so this is pretty simple. This is something, as I said, which comes up once in a while when you're doing things with shaders. I don't have anything currently planned uh, for for shader videos, which I plan on using this for, but in case I do in the future. It is a good tool to be aware of.
Again, anytime you want to have an effect applied that affects the entire screen, the application surface is usually a good way to go about doing that. Anyway, that's it. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post a couple of these videos a week. That's the idea. Anyway, we'll see if my schedule stabilizes a little uh, once, once, the, once the December holiday madness is over. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there are links to those all over the place. Not all over the place. There are links to those. They exist somewhere. I realize that would probably be more successful if I could like direct people to a specific video description or whatever. If you want the code for this, uh, there will be a link to that in the video description also. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to get access to these things a day early, or to see your name in the credits, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.